Hey everyone, it's Nora of Rock Your Life here again. I'm bringing to the mainstream storytelling, the art of storytelling and therapy through storytelling. Okay, welcome to the second clip that I am doing to share you a little bit more about my background. There's a lot of information, so if you see me looking down at my iPad, um, I had to take notes because there's a lot of stuff that I want you to know and trying to cram it into three, four, or five minutes is very challenging for me. It's funny, you probably would think, oh, how is this stressing me out? But it does. Okay, so basically what I wanted to say is just go back Hopefully you guys are watching this in order, but say that you're not. My story begins about around, I say, the age of 14. Um, really just basically having these perceptions about American culture. That's a lot of what I base a lot of my perceptions aside from, you know, how I was raised and my divorced parents and those issues there. But what I want to talk about and share with you is my life journey through perceiving the American culture. Okay. So at the age of 14, because, um, well, basically, the traditional model of basically, right, you go, you grow up being asked, are you going to college and do you have a boyfriend? I don't know if that still continues today, but that's how it was back then, 20 some, 30 whatever years ago. And so basically, I did not relate to the model of you get married, you get, ha you have two kids, get married, go to college get married, have two kids, get a minivan. Not that there is anything wrong with that. I just didn't relate to it, okay? Because I was passionately addicted and obsessed with my social activism, which was surrounding a very personal um, story that I will share with you coming up about being hypnotized by physical beauty. Okay, this is gonna be fascinating. It even still fascinates me. Okay, and then I had a lot of masculine interest. So if you've heard me talk about my punk rock music, which is one of my support systems that supported individualism, speaking up um, for the little man, blah, blah, blah. So that story goes on, um, which was a mindset of living for me. So I was very much basically as a result of I was seeing American culture, what they were showing on TV and magazines of the ideal beautiful woman. Uh, for whatever reason that I became consumed in that, whether maybe my dad not telling me I was beautiful and getting that kind of attention or whatever it was, but from my environment in rural Pennsylvania, I saw these things on TV that did not look like me, which at the time, and things are changing now, but at that time it was white, blue eyed, you know, big ass boobs, titties and um, hourglass figure which I've always thought is very beautiful. Okay, so basically that's what I came from, but um, my musical interests separated me and my fashion and um, those sorts of interests that I had there and all that sort of scene. Okay, so that was my scene back then. I was never into labels or being told what to do and being confined in boxed way of thinking. Um, so I didn't like going to church, but I never spoke up to my stepmom about it. So there were a lot of different things going on there that I didn't like that were restrictions on me, but I was never able to speak up. Okay, so that's my story there. Later on, I found to be an adult, while that was like my survival protective mechanism to give me myself a belonging in the punk rock um, subculture, which was very helpful. And I re revert back to those days in that music that have helped me so much. Um, and back then, you know, being different as far as having a mohawk and colored hair and all those sorts of things, that was different back then. So it's funny as an adult, I've reverted back to not wanting to do all of those things because it's in style here in California. Okay, so just to give you that sort of background right there is what I wanted to share with you and also to share with you actually as an adult, while I did confine myself in certain ways to a box of my punk rock snobness, I realized as an adult, I can be whoever I want, right? So I can rock my Mother Mary pendant with my Buddha. I can wear, um, one of my favorite styles is um, the polo or plaid shirt or Fred Perry polo as it's known with the sweater vest. And that was from traditional um, skinhead culture in England that was not racist. And I love that part of that style. And that's also another part of my story that um, maybe we'll talk about later. I had that influence that opened my eyes again that not all skinheads are racist because I had a phone boyfriend in eighth grade who opened me up to that whole world. So I guess in some ways I have a very interesting life story and of diversity and my perceptions about the world. So I will talk to you next 
I will slow down in the next clip about being hypnotized by physical beauty. Okay, see you in a minute.